Hello students, welcome to Accounting Explained at AccountWise Academy. This is Lata Venkateshwaran. This is the part 1 video of chapter 3 NCERT syllabus class 11 accountancy portion. The chapter name is recording of transactions. If you want to look into the important questions and the MCQs of this chapter, you can look into our the shorts of our channel Accounting Explain at AccountWise Academy. Even the chapter 1 and chapter 2 important questions and MCQs are shared as shorts in this channel. I will be sharing the link of chapter 1 and chapter 2 in the description box so that you can have a look into it for a better understanding. Topics to be covered for today's video are first one accounting process and vouchers. Accounting process. Accounting process involves identifying what is identifying? Identifying your expenses or an income. You have to first identify it's an expense or an income. Then analyzing. You have to analyze it whether you are going to debit it or credit it. Then next step is start recording the transaction. Okay. Then summarizing. You summarize the transactions and communicating the financial information. Then the summarized financial information should be communicated to the higher authorities or to the authorities who were asking for the information. Steps in the accounting process. This chapter focuses on the details of each step that is identifying, summarizing, recording and communicating. It may not be in order which I have told but it has to go in the order as we have seen before. Okay. What is the first step? First step is identifying transactions. First, you have to identify the transaction, right? Whether it's an expense or an income. Then recording them. Then we have to start recording. That's what we saw, right? No? In a journal. What is journal? Journal is called the book of original entry. Where all the original entries, no? The transactions which you have identified will be recorded. That is the original entry will be recorded in the journal before posting them to individual accounts in the ledger. Okay. After recording them in a journal, then you will post it in a ledger. Ledger consists of each and every individual account like cash account separately, sales account separately, purchases account separately, salaries account separately, electricity account separately, like that it will be. And ledger is called the principal book. Can you tell me what is a journal? Yes, journal is book of original entry and ledger is principal book. So what did we see here in the first step? First, we have to identify the transaction. Next, what we have to do? Next, we have to start recording. Now, recording consists of two steps, right? What did we see? Journal. We have to journalize it first. Then we have to Post them to individual accounts in the ledger. That is the principal book. What is journal called as? Journal is called as book of original entry. Okay. Business transactions. See in a business, each transaction, every transaction is a business transaction. Okay. They involve reciprocal exchange of value between parties. Reciprocal is nothing but give and take aspect. Okay. The example given is buying a computer with cash. These transactions have dual effects recorded in at least two accounts. So buying a computer with cash. What did you give? You gave cash. What did you get? You got computer. Okay. So it has dual effects. Okay, this transaction has got dual effect. What is the dual effect is? 
your cash will be decreased as you are buying right your cash amount will be your surplus accumulated cash amount will be decreased and your asset value computer as an asset right your asset value will be increased that is the dual effect recorded in at least two accounts so what are the two accounts involved here one is cash which has decreased in the amount and another is the computer that is the asset that has increased in the value that is the asset value has increased source document okay so what is the source document needed for recording a transaction they are called as vouchers these documents provide evidence of the transaction you cannot simply say i have bought a computer and you can write 1 lakh rupees that is not at all possible you need to have an evidence okay such as cash memos invoices or receipts they are used to support the accounting records petty expenses without a formal document may require a voucher with necessary details and approvals so if it is a heavy expenditure like buying a computer so you cannot buy a computer good computer um or for less than 50000 rupees so it's a big amount for that you need a cash memo invoice or receipt from the seller in case if it is a petty expenses for example if you are going to pay some uh, uh staff uh for his uh, what i should say for buying stationeries that means the expenses may not be very big like less than 1000 rupees okay for that we need a formal document that is called as a that is called a voucher and that voucher we are not uh, accountant cannot write and approve the voucher directly it has to have a necessary details like so and so has bought this much of stationery and that bill has to be attested i mean uh, sorry attached with the voucher in the back uh, stapled and it has to have the proper approval of his higher authorities then only it can be taken as a proper evidence of the transaction okay importance of vouchers all vouchers are arranged chronologically that is date wise numbered it is numbered in in a continuous manner you cannot if you have numbered chronologically for first if you have 10 vouchers it will be numbered as 1 2 3 4 5 till 10 and second it will start from only 11 okay you cannot insert in between after a, in the later date and it has to be numbered properly and kept for record keeping that is the evidence of transaction okay the accounting records are based on the information in these vouchers so these vouchers are the basis for making the accounting records or for preparing the accounting records so vouchers are very important for a business and it has to be arranged chronologically that is date wise numbered clearly so that we cannot insert an expense in the later date in between okay it cannot be that cannot that is that will not be possible okay and i once and again i am telling you this is very important these is these are the basis under which the accounting record sits or over which the accounting records it's i can say in that way also okay specimen of a transaction voucher this i have taken from your textbook this is the specimen transaction voucher name of the firm will be written here voucher number we saw no it has to be numbered continuously and it has to be arranged in the chronological order so the date will be written here what account has to be debited has to be written here what account has to be credited will be written here and the actual amount of rupees spent on for buying that particular item or for any expense that amount will be written narration we have to write a brief description of the expense for which this voucher has been written okay that has to be written in a brief way so that any person in the future if they sees the voucher they can understand for what this voucher has been returned for okay and it has to be authorized by the person who's eligible to authorize this voucher and it has to be signed by the 
person who has prepared the voucher okay all these things are very important for a for the preparation of the voucher now let us see what are the different types of voucher there are different types of vouchers like cash vouchers debit or credit vouchers and journal vouchers simple transaction voucher transactions with one debit and one credit only one debit and one credit are recorded in a transaction voucher okay first there are two types of transaction vouchers one is the debit voucher and another one is a credit voucher this format also i have taken only from your textbook okay in the debit voucher there will be name of the firm then the voucher number since it is a debit voucher we have to write the credited account okay amount will be written here and obviously date will be written here serial number 1 2 3 code each account name no will be given some code by the company for example for cash it will be 1001 1001 for bank it will be 1002 for uh, salary it will be 1003 something they would have uh, coded their account names like that so that will be written here and the account name will be written here what is the amount and narration as i have told a brief description of the transaction okay uh, this is called the debit voucher and second is a credit voucher same name of the firm voucher number and since it's a credit voucher we have to write the debit account what account has to be debited okay amount will be written here date serial number all same code account name amount and narration brief description of the transaction and authorized by the authorized authority that is signed by him prepared who who has prepared he has to sign here similarly here here we saw previously that for a simple transaction we prepare debit voucher and credit voucher right so if it is a complex transaction that is it has got multiple debits or credits then it requires a compound voucher or complex voucher or journal voucher which has multiple debits and credits okay all these things we will see very elaborately when we go further in the lesson okay this uh, format also i have taken from your textbook this is the format of the journal voucher same name of the firm here voucher number here date serial number okay code of the account name account name amount narration okay brief description of the transaction and then the credit accounts first we have taken seen the uh, debit accounts now we will see what are all the accounts to be debited okay so in the same same like serial number code account name amount narration that is the brief description of the transaction authorized by the required authorized authority he has to sign it prepared by the person who has prepared it has to sign it okay there is no set format for preparation of voucher but it has to have key elements see there is no single format for the preparation of voucher but it needs to have details like firm name transaction date voucher number account names debit or credit amounts transaction description the person who has prepared the voucher no his name and signature and the person who is supposed to authorize the voucher his signature these are all mandatory okay for the preparation of voucher voucher importance and design vouchers are kept for audits and taxation purposes mainly vouchers are used for audit and for transaction sorry taxation purposes businesses can customize voucher design they can use any paper color or any font or any size for easier organization but it has to have these following things firm name transaction date etc etc no are mandatory okay with this i am completing the part 1 video of chapter 3 accountancy portion of class 11 ncert syllabus do like our video and share it with your friends if you find it helpful subscribe to our channel which will encourage us to make more videos like this one if you would like to enquire about the accountancy classes which i take or to get more worksheets for problems with solutions 
contact us at account.wiseacademy at gmail.com.